So here I am, back so soon to continue reviewing the Season 1 stages. Last video we did Jewel Junction, this is the second stage of Chapter 2, this is Sparkling Springs. Sparkling Springs is in a sort of unfortunate, albeit unique situation. It doesn't have much of a reputation. A fair amount of people have played it, but nobody talks about it, nobody gives it the credit it deserves. It's kind of forgotten about and sidelined pretty good. And it's unfortunate because Sparkling Springs does have a lot to offer as a whole. Off the bat, obviously the aesthetic isn't the most well developed, but it does feel true to its nature. It's supposed to represent that of an oasis, and it does a decent enough job at that. It looks good, definitely a step up from Jewel Junction, but still not quite the highest bar to set. Nonetheless, it looks good, and in that sense, aesthetically, it is a success. It's not quite immersive, but... It still looks good, you can definitely understand the set piece we we're going for here, and it's reasonable to say it was a success overall, but there's still a little bit more to be desired. You'll notice that Sparkling Springs has a bit of a faster flow than previous stages before it. 1 to 6 were relatively in the middle between fast and slow, while Sparkling Springs asks you to keep up your momentum and keep moving. This encourages speedruns to happen and as a result incentivizes players to go back and maximize their rank that much more. And what's great about the design of Sparkling Springs is that it complements the fast flow of the map. And the reason for this is because there's a sense of balance between the two. If the map is designed for you to go fast in, then there's no reason to be punished for going fast. And furthermore, you're not punished if you decide to take it a little bit more carefully either. There's a bit of a choice here and you're not punished either way, which makes the difficulty a lot better for most players. Nobody would ever say that Sparkling Springs is a hard map. The general agreement is that it sits around the intermediate difficulty, and that's a perfectly fair difficulty for the second stage of Chapter 2. It is completely appropriate to be a sort of middle-of-the-road difficulty at this point in the stages, because you're already past the beginner phase, you understand what you have to do, how to do it, so now that you're more experienced, a stage like Sparkling with the difficulty it does offer is a perfect challenge for people. To sum up how I feel about the design and layout of Sparkling Springs, for the most part it's done very well, but then there's the beam part, the fence part, and that's where it loses a bit of credibility. This part is designed not unfairly, but there's frustration littered all over this part. This is what you will be sabotaged by when you go for your champ or glory rank. It isn't poor design as a whole, but it is incredibly frustrating, and nobody on this planet likes this part. Luckily, it's pretty brief, and it might only last you 15 to 20 seconds if you know what you're doing. But it is one questionable part out of many great parts of the stage, so it won't be hurting its score too much. Also, a very important note to mention is that Sparkling Springs introduced a mechanic that would stick with us long term. And that has to go to the homing minecarts of this stage. The idea of this mechanic is that you sit in a minecart and you're within range to enter another one. So you line up your cursor and you practically teleport to the next one once you're ready to enter. And you keep doing that until you cross over the large gap between the first minecart and the last. Stage later on even proposes a question in minecart form if you are ready to take the next step with the homing minecarts with this part that you see on screen. You have two opportunities to make this shortcut. Sparkling Springs, although a little flawed in some aspects, is still a great addition to the stages. It represents improvement made from Jewel Junction, because in every facet of Jewel Junction, Sparkling Springs does it better. Better pacing, less annoyances, more innovation and creativity and thought put into this stage as a whole. And so chapter two in its entirety wouldn't look the same without Sparkling Springs. And ultimately, I could not imagine a better stage in place of the seventh amongst the rest. While aesthetically in design, it isn't perfect. It manages to nail difficulty because it appeals to the greatest amount of players. It is not a ridiculously hard map, nor is it super easy either but it isn't daunting in either direction enough for the opposite class to have a hard time with it. Instead, it's fun for everybody to an extent, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters.
Sparkling Springs is a great map with little flaws to take away from its impact. Thank you guys for watching this video, just taking time out of your day to check this out. I'm always very appreciating of that, even though last time I said jack shit on the end card, at least I'm here now. And uh, I also want to give a thank you to Sav, who made a cameo in this video as well, that's two in a row, so I bet she'll be fond of that. Um, the current state of the fourth stage of the second season, it's, it's going, slowly. Honestly, we're just not sure where to take it next, but... We're giving it some good thought, and we got some good ideas in there that I'm sure you'll all come to enjoy when I make a video for that. So, yeah, with that in mind, everybody, though, I will see you in the next one. Take care for now.